all know who runs the house and it's about time they get the recognition that they truly deserve. Today, we'll be looking at how to turn our dogs into dignified generals with their very own painterly portraits because we both know we want to. I'm Abby Esparza and I've been creating creative composites for about 10 years now and all the resources featured today can be found over on Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts all with super simple commercial licensing. A plus a no locking contract means you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now with the link down in the description. We're going to start things right off by first laying out and planning out our image, just by doing really quick extractions of the dog's head and a paws, and then laying them over the original subject, the original human subject. I love to use the object select tool combined with a layer mask for the first initial extraction, and then I'll refine that extraction by going into select a mask and using the refined edge brush. With smart radius checked and set to around four uh, pixels or so, three to five pixels tends to be the sweet point here. With this type of composite, we don't need to be very precise with our extractions. We're not only dealing with a lot of fur, but we'll be adding in some strong painterly textures that's really going to hide a lot of our less than perfect edges. We just want to make sure the edges aren't uh, too harsh and that they cut off at the appropriate points, like at the uh, wrist where the cuff is and um, the collar of the shirt. Now that we know where things go, we want to hide what's peeking out from underneath. Let's make a duplicate of our human subject just so we have a backup uh, in case we need one. We're going to take the patch tool and just patch out all the parts of our original human that we don't want to see. We can do the head in one go just by patching from an area of our studio background. But this upper hand is a bit more tricky. Uh, try and patch from areas of the armor or any other part of the human's body that almost mimics the very general shape of the sword hilt that would kind of be there. The patch areas only have to look good when the dog layers are switched on. It's okay if they look straight up crazy when you switch those layers off. Here's what mine look like with them off, but we're not actually seeing this as they're hidden behind the dog paws and head, so don't overthink it. Real quick, let's do some fast color correction to those paws, since in this case they come from a completely different colored dog. I highly recommend turning your layers into right-click smart objects so you can use smart filters, which are just adjustment filters that remain adjustable. That or you could use adjustment layers. Either way, you want to edit non-destructively. Edit in a way where you could always go back and make adjustments if you need to. So for both our paws, let's do a brightness contrast of a negative 150 brightness and a about a 50 contrast. Then a hue saturation of a 360 hue and a nine saturation. Keeping in mind that settings like these are always adjustable and can change from image to image. And then for our bottom paw, let's do another brightness contrast of around negative 85 brightness and a negative 50 contrast since it's in a shadowy area. For our puppy's head, uh, let's add a brightness contrast of 41 
brightness with a 28 contrast as it's our focal point. So we want him to be nice and bright. And we can finish off our dog parts with just some quick shadows and highlights using a default soft round brush. A create and clip a new layer set to overlay into the dog's paws and head. Then we can use black anywhere we need shadows, like around the dog's neck and wrist. And we can paint white anywhere we want more highlight, like in the dog's eyes and on the uh, very top of the upper paw. And we are just going to keep adding in both shadows and highlights using layers set to soft light, overlay, and multiply. Soft light is ideal for softer shadows and highlights, while overlay will add more harsh contrast in with that uh, lighting and shading. And then multiply is excellent for true dark shadows where you really want to kill all highlights. Place these layers both behind and in front of the paws and head, just wherever you find yourself needing them. We can use the default round brush at different hardnesses, opacities, and flow rates, focusing on the joints of the composite, or where the two images meet. So again, the wrist and the neck. I also brought some shadow behind the dog's head, then some highlights right in front of the face to add a bit more depth. Don't worry about being precise. We're just laying down general shadows and helping things connect more. With our uh, basic shadows laid, uh, let's start adding in our kind of a vignette effect. First with a curves adjustment layer, placing it right above the original subject's body and below all the others. We're going to bring the curve down to deepen the shadows, replicating something like what you see here. Let's use a soft round brush to mask out the middle of the dog's portrait, focusing on the face and upper chest area. Then we can bring in even more light onto the subject by creating a new layer right at the top of our current layer stack, setting it to soft light. So we're going to bring down the opacity to around 35% for now, but of course you can increase or decrease that once you paint some white over the dog's face and the kind of upper chest area. We want this to be a large but very smooth light gradient, almost in a crescent moon shape. And then let's repeat that step, making a second soft light layer, setting it to 50% opacity or so, and then painting black using the same brush. But this time we want to paint on the edges of the image, bringing in more of that deep vignette effect. I prefer hand painting in a vignette effects instead of using any kind of built-in filters. You just get much more control and they look a bit more organic. At this point in the image, uh, he might start looking a little washed out, but that's perfectly fine since we'll be adding in some pretty heavy textures and a very heavy color grade right at the end um, that'll add in tons of contrast. So don't worry if he's looking a little flat. In fact, let's get started on that painterly uh, portrait effect. It'll consist of four textures and I'll be using this a 25 portrait texture pack from Envato Elements. Depending on how heavy you want the effect to be, you can add more or fewer textures. The more textures you add, the more you'll get an almost vintage-y uh, looking effect. Let's start with our first texture, Texture 25, a set to soft light and laying it vertically over the subject. All the future textures will also be laid vertically. We want to focus on how the background of the subject looks don't worry about the face becoming overly textured or overly processed. Uh, we're just focusing on the uh, more vignetted areas. Next, let's lay texture 20, again vertically, over the subject, setting its layer mode to color. Now let's place a texture 4 vertically over the subject, uh, setting it to color dodge. We're also going to add a hue saturation adjustment, 
setting it to a hue of plus 180 and a saturation of negative 34, turning it a bluish color. And then we want to bring down its layer opacity to 40% or so. Now we have texture 6 set to multiply with an opacity of 50%. And then let's add a brightness contrast set to 47 brightness and 100 contrast. That'll be our last texture, but again, feel free to layer on even more. Now we can group all those textures together and then name that group texture to be nice and tidy. And then let's add a layer mask to the group and mask out the texture around the face of the dog. We want this to be a really smooth blend, focusing on removing the texture from the face and also slightly from the body. We want the texture to be heavy around the borders of the canvas. That's where they should be heaviest and then they gradually get lighter and lighter. We're going to help those textures kind of meld into the image by adding a pretty intense vintage inspired color grade. This color grade will consist of five different adjustment layers all placed right at the top of our layer stack. We'll be going through the color grade from the bottom and then going up. So our first adjustment layer will be a color lookup layer set to edgy amber at an opacity of 35%. Uh, next, we have another color look of layer set to film stock at 25% opacity. And third, we have one more color look of layer set to the first Kodak of 5218 LUT at a 70% opacity or around there. Next, let's add a curves adjustment layer and bring up those highlights. We want to mask this so that it only affects the face and chest area of the dog, just intensifying the vignette effect. And lastly, a second curves layer, bringing up the blues and the shadows, but bringing down those blues and the highlights. And then also pulling down the reds and the highlights. Just try and mimic what you see here for the curves, but it never has to be exact. We're just bringing blues into the image's shadows and yellows into the highlights. And to finish everything off, uh, this step is entirely optional. But it is how I like to finish off a lot of my images, so I figured I'd uh, share it with you. Let's select all of our current layers and right click convert to smart object. Yes, we are basically turning this whole PSD into one giant smart object. Now let's go to filter, camera, raw. And here we're going to make any final adjustments to the color grade. For now, I'm just going to bring in a substantial amount of grain, since this is a grainy painterly effect, uh, setting it to around 30. Then I'm going to go into detail and set the sharpening to 20 and the noise reduction to 75. Now reducing that much noise gets rid of the finer details while the sharpen will enhance whatever is kind of left over. I absolutely only recommend doing this on images where you want a slight painterly feel. And that's how to create a dog general painting in Photoshop. The key is choosing the right images to composite. You want to make sure both subjects face the same direction and are shot at similar perspectives. Uh, that's why studio shots are definitely the way to go here. It also makes compositing things much much easier. But if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you liked this video, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos including tips, tricks, and of course more tutorials. Happy designing, see you next time.